In this episode, I'm going to give you five tips that will help you save time when working with Lightroom. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this episode of Exploring Photography. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, as photographers, we need to work quickly to meet all of our deadlines to make sure our clients are happy, and Lightroom is the application that helps us do that. It helps us automate repetitive tasks, things like keyboarding and sorting and exporting files and a lot more. Well, Lightroom has a few hidden features that can really help us to save time. In fact, I've compiled five of my favorite hidden features in Lightroom. So we have a ton to cover, so let's get started right now. Number five, keyboard shortcuts. You can save a ton of time by using keyboard shortcuts in Lightroom. For example, you can get from the library module to the develop module by hitting G, get to the crop tool by hitting R, get out of the crop tool by hitting R again, get the white balance tool by hitting W, get back to the library module by hitting G, kick out the side panels, kick them back in, etc. You can really save yourself a ton of time. But how do you know what all those keyboard shortcuts are? Well, it's very simple. There's a keyboard shortcut for that. It's command or control on a PC forward slash. And there it is. Here are all your library shortcuts. Click on that to make it go away. If you want to see the shortcuts for the develop module, just go over there, command forward slash. There they are. In every single module, you just hit command or control on a PC forward slash to see all your shortcuts. And if you can't remember that shortcut key, no problem. Just go to the help menu and you'll see right here the develop module shortcuts, command forward slash. That's all you have to remember to remember all of those shortcut keys. Number four, manage your panels. The panels in Lightroom are the things that help us navigate and adjust our photos. There are these things to the side and the top and the bottom of our modules. Now we can turn these on and off by hitting shift tab to get rid of all the panels and just tab to bring in the side panels. We probably all know that we can drag and drop to resize these, but there are other things we can do to manage our panels as well. If you right click on the panel, you can collapse all and that makes everything look very nice. And then you can just open what you need to see at that time. You can open, for example, the folders and the catalog or you can also do something called solo mode. So let me expand everything here so you can see all of this stuff. If I right click and say solo mode, what will happen is Lightroom is going to automatically close everything except for the area that I'm working on right now. So I'm in the folders uh, area. If I wanna uh, click the catalog, look at that. Catalog shows up, it automatically closes my folders area. Same happens with published services etc. When I'm done, I can unclick solo mode so I can open more than one thing at a time. Now this works for all the panels in all of the modules. So if we zip over to the develop module, you can see here I've collapsed all of this. If I click on effects and maybe lens correction, if I go to solo mode, you can see that now I'm only seeing one thing at a time. It's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and undo this. The other thing you can do here is let's say in uh, one of the modules in one of the panels, you don't use everything. So for example, maybe I don't use camera calibration and effects. What you can do is you can right click and you can uncheck the things that you don't want to see. So I'm going to uncheck effects, uncheck camera calibration. Now I'm only seeing the things that I use all the time. If you want to show all of them, click show all. It works really great. So that is a really quick and easy way to manage your panels. And remember, this works in all of the modules, not just the develop and library module. Number three, crop guide overlays. In the develop module, if you're using your crop tool, you might want some assistance in the crop tool to help you best crop your image. Now you can do that with guide overlays. So to turn that on, Go to Tools, Tool Overlay, Always Show. Now notice there's this little overlay or guide. It's the rule of thirds in this instance that will show up when I'm cropping my image. Now there are other overlays that you can show. Go to the Tools menu, Crop Guide Overlay, and notice we can use a grid, the rule of thirds, diagonals, triangles, the golden ratio, golden spirals, and even aspect ratios. And to cycle through them, you just hit the shortcut key O. So watch what happens. I'll hit the O key. There we have our triangles. We've got all kinds of things here to help us crop this image. Now in the instance 
of our aspect ratios, we can show different aspect ratios. So once again, I can go to Tools, Crop Guide Overlay, choose my aspect ratios. Now I can turn on different aspect ratios to show up there and uh, disable ones that I'm not going to use and then click OK. Now I can see those when I cycle through my overlays. Now I like the thirds, so that's what I have mine left to. Now if you want to shut that off, once again, just go up to Tools, Tool Overlay, Never Show, and it goes away and you're just fine. Number two, Keyword Sets. If you work on images that are similar over and over, perhaps you're a wedding photographer or portrait photographer or outdoor photographer, you're probably using the same keywords pretty frequently. Well, that's where these keyword sets uh, come in handy. So we've got some that are built in and shipped with Lightroom, for example, wedding photography, portrait photography, and outdoor photography. And you can see it's a set of nine keywords. And so what you can do is you can just click on your keyword here and it will add that to the image or images that you have selected. So I'll select all three of these and then I'll just click landscape and bam, landscape is added to all three of these images. Now, if you want to create your own custom keyword set, it's really simple. Just go to edit set and then what you want to do is delete all of the keywords that you don't want to use. So I'll get rid of all of them. So I'll have a clean slate and I'm going to create one for my Machu Picchu shoot. Now that's pretty specific, but we'll just use that for now. So I'll add keyword Machu Picchu and Peru and notice that this has uh, the ability to see what you're typing and pull in previously used keywords. So I'll add travel there and maybe uh, mountain. I'll do that lowercase mountain and Inca, etc. So I've got my keywords here that I might use for this and then I'm going to save this as a new preset. And I'll name that preset Machu Picchu. I'll create that and then I'll change this over. Now notice that in my keyword sets here I've got all these different keyword sets and that includes my new Machu Picchu keyword set and now I can add any of these keywords really quickly to any of these uh, images that I have selected. So maybe I add Peru here that needs to be there and travel and mountain looks pretty good. Number one, published folder sets. Now this tip is much more involved, but stick with me because it's worth it. First, let's talk about the problem that we're trying to solve. Let's say that you're a photographer and you want to get your work out there to numerous blogs, maybe different competitions and in print if possible. What you're doing is you're using the same images over and over, but you're outputting them in different formats, different file sizes, different color spaces, different dimensions, etc. But essentially you're using the same photos. And so what I've done here to illustrate this is I've created a collection called promo images. I've got some behind the scenes shots. So maybe if a blog wants to talk about how I shoot something, I can send them some shots of me shooting Machu Picchu. I've got some models on location. I have uh, scenic work. I've got some of my studio work in here and then I've got some of my travel photography as well. Now what I want to do is have a place for that on my hard drive where everything's ready to go if somebody calls and says send us some images. So what I've done is I've created manually this portfolio images folder and inside that I've divided things into these different categories behind the scenes. So I've got a bunch of photos there behind the scenes and notice these are all the same width. I have my location shots, I've got my scenic shots, etc. Now the thing is these are all been exported using the same settings. So the long edge I think is 1200 pixels. So what I could do in my Lightroom catalog to keep these all up to date is I could go into each of these different collections, these smart collections, select everything and then go file and export and then use an export preset. But I'd have to do that for each of these folders. I don't want to do that. In fact, I don't even want to create the folders on my hard drive. I want Lightroom to do everything for me automatically. And if I update anything, I want it to take care of all those updates as well. The way to do this is with published services. So we're going to set this all up really quickly and uh, it's really rewarding once you have this done. So the first thing we want to do here is click this little plus and go to the publishing manager. And I need to create a new published service. So I'm going to go down here to add, click that, and it's going to ask me for a name. Now it says it's optional, but I highly recommend that you enter a name here to keep things straight. And so what I'm going to call this is promo images. 
just something simple. And I'm going to create that. Now on the right hand side here, we have this very familiar dialog. Uh, it's very familiar to our export settings. The difference here is this export location. You need to make sure you get that right the first time because once you have this set up, you can't change this location. That's a big difference between this and exporting. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click choose and I've already created a, a folder called my promotional images on my photo hard drive. So I've clicked on that. I'm going to choose it and you see there volumes, my photo hard drive, my promotional images. I don't want to put anything in a subfolder. It's important to unclick that and you'll see why later. Now we can do different things here with our file naming, etc. So I'm going to set that up really fast and then we'll resume. Okay, we have everything set up here. Notice that I have my image sizing set to 1200 pixels on the long edge. And so that will make sure that my images on the long edge are all 1200 pixels wide. And I've got my copyright and contact info only with no watermark. Okay, I've got all that set up. I'm going to save this. Now in my hard drive, I've got this promo images with my promotional images with zero images in this published service. Now I could start dragging and dropping things, but that's not the point. What we want to do is have this set up a series of uh, folders on our hard drive. So what I'll do is I will right click and I'm going to say create published folder set. When I do that, it's going to ask me for a name. Now what I want to do is I'm going to call this portfolio images. Now whatever I name this you'll see is going to uh, show up on my hard drive as a folder. So it's important to name this something that's intelligent. So I'm going to call this portfolio images and I'm going to say create. Now in my portfolio images if I click this disclosure triangle you can see there's nothing there. If I right click that I'm going to create a published smart folder. Now you could create a published folder but just to save time and to show you how this works I'm going to uh, create a published smart folder and then what I'll do here is I'm going to do this inside my portfolio images set and I'm going to call this behind the scenes. And essentially I'm going to recreate my uh, collection that I had earlier. So the keywords as long as it contains all portfolio and behind the scenes. I will create that. Now notice I have this folder here that has 17 images in it. This is the behind the scenes smart folder essentially that I had up in my collection. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to really quickly create the rest of these. Now that you've seen how I've done one, I'll do the rest really quickly and then we'll go from there. All right, I've created the rest of these smart folders here and they're all set up using keywords. So they're looking for two keywords specifically, one portfolio and then a second keyword travel portfolio, key, second keyword studio, portfolio, second keyword scenic, etc. That's how these are populated and I already have images in them. Then what I can do is click on this portfolio images, the top level, and I'll get this little button right at the top that says publish. When I click that, it's going to publish all of those folder or all those images and create all of the folders using the settings that I created in my promotional images at the very, very first of this exercise. So let's let this finish and I'll show you how it shows up on the hard drive. Now, after a bit of work that has finished the uh, publish, now what we can do is we can go over to the hard drive. Now this is my external photos hard drive. Here is the folder I created, this my promotional images. Now notice that it has this portfolio images inside of that folder. Now that was created by Lightroom and all of the subfolders were also created by Lightroom and all of the images were updated by Lightroom as well. And these are all the exact uh, long edge 1200 pixel image that I wanted to create. Now the key to this and the joy of this is that now if I want to update all of these images all at once, I can do it with one click. Now let me show you how easy this is once I have it all set up. Well, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to my catalog, look at all of my photographs, and then what I'm going to do is I want to add an image really quickly. So I'm going to go over to my keywords and I know that I want to find an image of myself and Joey Joyner and Martin and Mag from uh, Buenos Aires. So here's that image. Now what I can do to add this is I have created a keyword set called portfolio. I know if I add two keywords portfolio and behind the scenes now this image 
is going to show up in my published service. So we'll go back down here. Here's my behind the scenes. And notice there is this new image that I've added just by clicking two keywords, which is great because now I can just add keywords as I'm editing images and it will automatically update my portfolio images. Now I'm doing this with keywords instead of flagging them because sometimes I flag images to use in workshops that are examples of bad photography. I don't want that to show up in my portfolio, so I'm using keywords instead. Now the other thing I can do here, let's say that I get a request from a blog and they want all of the images to be 400 pixels wide. Now before, if I would have done this in collections, I would have had to go to each collection, highlight all of or select all of the images and export them one at a time for each folder. I don't have to do that anymore. Now what I can do here is go to my promo image uh, hard drive settings here and say edit settings. I will go down here to my image size. I will change that to 400 pixels. Now I could change almost anything else here. I can change how it sharpened the con uh, copyright information. And just for fun, uh, we could add a, a, a watermark, some copyright information there. I can do almost anything except renaming them is a little bit more tricky, but we don't have time to go into that. So that's one thing that you can't do easily. But I can change my file sizes and all those other things. So I'll click save and it's going to say, hey, you've changed the settings for this published collection, all of it. So what I'm going to do is say republish all. And then I can go to my portfolio images, hit publish and watch what happens. Lightroom is going to uh, not only update with that new photo I added, it's going to also update everything else with one click. All right, it's finished its work. We can zip over to our hard drive and let's take a look at what happened. So here are our folders exactly like they were before. But now if I open these uh, images, you can see that they're really small. All of them are really small because with one click, we have updated the entire collection, the entire folder and all the subfolders and everything else that goes along with it. And if we wanted to in the future, we could just add a new collection set to this and it would automatically add a new subfolder to our portfolio images. So this is just one way to use published folder sets. Now there are a ton of different ways and endless combinations to use these, but you get the idea. These are really powerful and they're gonna save you a ton of time. Well, there you have it. Five ways that can help you be much more productive when using Lightroom. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And don't forget, Adorama TV is absolutely free. and We've got new videos coming to you every single day. So click on the subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again next time. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.